I don't actually remember what the last thing I filmed was. Um, it's been a little while. So I'm just going to kind of go from where I am right now and hopefully the next part that you just saw will make sense with this part. Um, so I finished painting it. So here I took off the tape. I think that's kind of where I got to the last bit of it. And I've given it two coats of future so it's nice and glossy. Look at that shine. It's going to be beautiful. Um, and I had to do a couple touch-ups. I had a nice big fat thumbprint here because when I was taking off the tape there I this didn't dry and I so I had to sand that down that was a bit of wet sanding and I just repainted it and then yeah I masked off the band here and the band on the tail here painted those white it turned out pretty nice I'm quite happy with that and the trickiest parts were the cowlings um, it was easier to to uh, paint it white and then tape off the white and repaint the green and the blue on there. So this is a second coat. Plus I missed a little bit on here. Got a little bit of green on one of them. And so I just painted these um, metallic gray, the vents there. And uh, they're a nice bright white. These are coated in future and they'll be ready to go. And the propellers are painted a dark, dark green. So I got those. And they're over there drying. Not going to bother them right now. So the part I need to paint now are the spinners. And here they are. So for the spinners, what um, Revel recommends... Let me just see what they call it here. I call it... Actually, I should look at the instructions. Uh, the one full of... D. D, 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 D. Carmen Red. So I don't have Revel paints or access to Revel paints, but on the box it's a very dull red, kind of a dusty red. And the only dusty red I have is is uh, Tamiya Red. Is is flat red. Is very dusty looking. But I don't want that. I want a, kind of an ID. So I'm going to show you guys this new paint here. Um, I don't know if this is called P3 or P cubed, but uh, I bought this. I bought one of these for my brother a little while ago. Uh, I found this at a, at a comic book store. This is Candor Red Base. And uh, not, not that expensive. It's only about $350. It's a big pot of paint, too. And uh, I bought him a gold because he's complained about not having uh, a gold. He doesn't really like the Tamiya gold. He sometimes has to apply like three or four layers, which bugs him. And with this stuff, he tried it, and it was only like a layer, and it was like perfect. And he did another layer, and it looked, you know, even better. It would have looked good at just one base, but definitely at two, it looked amazing. And so he bought this one, and I bought a yellow to try for myself. And the yellow is amazing. Yellow is one of the hardest paints to get to cooperate. I've had many a battle with this stuff before, but this, nah, -uh -uh. it is really nice. Two layers, and it's perfect so I'm gonna try this red because he showed me it on a on a miniature he painted and so you just shake it up and it's kind of resembles a bit of the Citadel uh, paints here um, he said it has a bit of a shine to it which I thought that that's okay I really don't mind that so the only problem with this stuff is I can't uh, airbrush it you know uh, I could uh, I could go through the uh, very lengthy process that is um, learning how to mix acrylic kind of this is like a crafting acrylic paint I forgot to clean this a little bit of flash on this one so I gotta do that real quick there we go that's better it is possible to do it but it's, it's more work than it's worth for me So I'm bending about two coats of this stuff, and I'll have a really bright red, and it levels itself pretty nice. I was I was really impressed with that. So I'm not too 
worried about all those streaks in here. And so my hope is to just paint it on here and get it um, nice and flat later on. So this is what I'm going to go do, is uh, paint these up, build the propellers. I built the landing gear. They just need to be weathered up a bit and dirty. Um, heck, I'm going to paint this as well, because you can see in there just a little bit. And uh, I have to paint the wheels. I have to find out how to paint the um, kind of the, I don't know what you call them, hubcaps here. Oh, it just left my mind what the actual name of it is. But uh, they spin really well. It's kind of fun. So i got to figure out how to paint, what color to paint this. I think it's like a semi-gloss black or something like that. But uh, that's about it. I'm going to go keep painting this. And probably the next thing we'll do pretty soon here is start uh, decaling the model, which I'm getting pretty excited for. Got Microset. We've got Microsol. We've got Tamiya Mark Fit Strong, just in case. We've got my deckling brush. And we have a pair of swastika decals for the tail. Let me just make sure they fit properly. Oh, gee, no, they don't. They're way too big. Way, way, way too big. Okay. That's okay. I'll get a couple more later, so that'll be like the last thing that I do. Let's get the rest of them out here. So, here's my decal. There we go. Okay. So the first one we'll start with is... 22 and 22. Ah, I do love digging into a new set of decals and deckling around. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like deckling and they consider this to be one of their least favorite parts, but for me, I, uh, yeah, I'm weird about it. I like decals. To me, it's the part where the uh, model really comes together. You know, you did the painting and uh, constructing as best you can. And there we go. Now it takes on its own uh, life, I guess. I get to use these shields here. I think I mentioned these shields before. They're really cool. Especially this kind of a king sitting on a throne here. <laughs> Awesome looking owl, scorpion. I'm using the lion. And, uh, hmm. I don't know what else I'm going to be using here as far as the decals go. So the next ones that I'll need is FN 16 and 19. Actually, heck, I'm going to put the, um, the Balkan Kreutz on first. 84, those ones there. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put these on first, and then you kind of put, because you know these two are parallel to each other on the, on the, on the model. Oh, bet you those have soaked up more than enough water by now. So there's a little bit of film on them. The film is like right here. It's kind of weird. But, uh, there we go. That's an easy fix. <clears throat> there we go. Whoops. Actually, peeled it off there. Uh, let's see. Now I just need to know which direction these go it doesn't yeah it doesn't say so oh it kind of does okay so let's use a microset which is always nice because it is like a glue for the decal oh boy I think it fits oh yeah it does fit about here Yeah, 
Yeah, I knew it was going to stick to my finger. So let's just put it down. I think I got that one in the right spot. This is like some of the most boring deckling I think you guys have probably seen me do. Some really dumb little little stencils. much solvent there. Okay. There we go. Okay, so those are on there. Let's do these crosses here. See how they match. See how they fare. Oh shoot, I forgot to poke the holes in them. Um, that's what, again, the needle and the pin vise is for. So I can stab all the uh, carrier film. That's all the clear parts, uh, mostly. Also works on the decals itself. And uh, I think what I'm going to do with these ones is, uh, is cut them on the uh, panel lines. All the ones. So, like, th that cross, those crosses will go over this. Uh, line right here and so I'll just take a brand new knife and just cut it like that put some more solvent on and I can't remember which youtuber recommended it but they had a really awesome idea that I'd never thought of before and again it's really awesome to take some sponge like this and press on the decal to help it conform and uh, sorry I can't remember the name but um, Really great idea. I did find some sponge. I'm going to give that a go this time. So that's going to that's going to help out with the with the decals here. Come on. It's running away from me in the bowl. Come on. Almost ready. So yeah, that's what I like to do, you know, when I'm when I'm deckling is I I work from the tail to the front. And that way I can, you know, see like this, I can hold on to the, to the wings here. And sometimes what I'll do is, like, I might do this, just this whole fuselage in a day. And tomorrow, do the top and the bottom of the wings. And that way I can, you know, hold on to things. And this part will be dry, it's already taken care of. Um, it's kind of one of the things I've learned more is that deckling takes more time than I thought. You know, deckling used to take me like an hour to do, but I've had a couple projects lately where it's it's really taken me sometimes three, four, or five days to completely, you know, deckle the model. You gotta let it um you've gotta let it dry, you've gotta let it settle, and then sometimes there's all this extra work you have to put in. Um that is you the modeler needs to uh needs to do extra work to get them to look nice. Other times, you know, I've had models where it's just like, I don't really care. I put the decals down, if they can form. Sometimes that's all I care about. Depends on the model. Ah, shoot. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that microsol, no, sorry, microset, just works a little too good. knows too much. Where did I put it? Oh, it's... So yeah, it's basically right on the uh, panel line here. Then I'm supposed to line it up like that. Push it to there. Okay. 
Oh, okay, so I see. So I'm supposed to match it with this line. This line is at an angle by comparison. So now I'm going to take my cotton swab and press down on it here. And uh, later on, in a little while, I'll put some microsol on it. And I can see the silvering in there. It's really bugging me. So I can, even even like this, I can just stab them a bit like that after the decal is laid down. I can still make all these holes in it. And the microsol will help to even out all these holes and, and uh, it'll fill in all that silvering in. I've had instances where there is silvering and no matter what I've done and uh, I put a coat of future over top of the decal and it's gone. So that might happen with uh, with this one. But anyways, this is going to take me quite a while to do. I think it's going to be about probably a two day project of decaling all these stencils and cutting them, getting them to line up. It's going to be a very 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 long and boring process but uh, it needs to be done and it'll be worth it in the end so I'm gonna go and finish the rest of these uh, rest of these decals here so I did the ones here on the side this is all I've done so far and this has been over an hour yeah so there's lots of panel lines in here and they're beautiful and recessed and everything and I want them to like conform when you have a panel line wash because there's I don't know for me when I build my models and stuff and I put a panel line wash and it doesn't run into all the grooves I get kind of cranky I'm like ah dang it you know it could have been fixed type of thing um, so I've added on microset that's the blue bottle and I did some microsol and uh, they are wrinkling up nicely so what I want to do here because I can see the line, I'm going to about here. I don't know if I'm even going to get this in the shot properly, so I apologize. Oh, good. So this is the. This is the trick, you know, let's see how well this works, pressing a sponge into the, to the panel lines here. I'm just gonna... Oh my goodness. Perfect. That looks excellent. That looks absolutely fantastic. Like, they're in the panel lines now. So, unfortunately, I've forgotten your name, but you know who you are because we talked about this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, I'm sorry I forgot your username, but that is awesome. I mean, you can't see it here, but they're in the lines. And all I'm going to do later is just, no, not that one, sorry, just a little bit of microsol probably in that line and just press on it a little more. You know, just instead of the whole decal, it's just like this. That is awesome. Cool. So now when I put that black uh, panel line on here, it's not going to just be like here, it's going to go all the way through. It's going to look amazing. So, thank you so much. That's an awesome tip. I'm going to go and finish this, and I did get a new swastika for the tail, and that's going to take quite a while to get uh, down, because there's, there's like all these lines in here. It's going to be quite a bit of work, but it'll be worth it in the end. But uh, yeah, lots and lots of work. All right, everybody, I've been working kind of slower at this lately here in southern Alberta right now. It is July. No, it's not July. I wish it was July. It's January. The something something. 27th. And it is 
I am not kidding. It is 20 above Celsius right now. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm loving it. And so I haven't done a lot of modeling. I've been out uh, yesterday. I was basically out in the sun all day, and then doctor's appointment, and then more fun in the sun till the sun went down. Fortunately, still got that short range of sunlight. But man, this is just fantastic. It's been 20 above for two days in January. That that's not supposed to happen here. And then on the other side of the continent. Yeah, on the on the east coast right now, it's blizzarding and snowing, and I really feel for them right now because, well, we're gonna get our justice a piece of that soon enough. Um, as is the uh, justice system of Canada here. Um, yeah, here is all the decals, and I gave it a flat coat. I'm quite happy with how this flat coat turned out, except it revealed a lot of silvering in the balcony crates there in the some of the letters here on the side and it's it's pretty like, like it's kind of minor and you kind of have to look at it to see it but when you catch it in the right light you just see it and um i, I i'm actually gonna say it was the decals fault this time uh, i've had this problem with several revel decals lately and uh yeah this time it really was their fault i i worked at them as much as I could and they just sometimes they just didn't want to work and other times they went down perfectly I don't know what to tell you but uh, so yeah this is all done here and what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna actually take off the tape on these windows here in a little while but now I'm basically painting all the little bits like um, I have to finish painting the spinners here's the propellers they're painted uh, dark green, which by the way I need to make mention when I did the Spitfire I painted it uh, No, I painted it dark green and Rob at basic modeling recommended black green and uh, Yeah, he was totally right. This is much better a color. I could have had. I'm still gonna I'm still happy with the color I have on there, but this is a much more appropriate color. So thanks Rob. I've I've uh, learned my lesson now and next time I need to build one I'm definitely gonna reach for that other color um, but yeah, this is mostly kind of the home stretch, you know, I'm painting the, uh, tires and this, and the hubcabs, whatever you want to call them, and, uh, getting all of this done here, and this is going to take me a little while to do, but, uh, it's not that bad, and then I'm going to add on the, uh, panel line wash on the, on all the model here. That's one of the parts I'm most looking forward to is um, <clears throat> seeing all this detail pop out. However, I, I have to admit too, um, this is kind of one of the, the very few models where I'm contemplating not doing it because it, they look fine, but uh, this is just this is just one of those models where the panel lines are so perfect. I just feel guilty if I didn't do it, but it looks good on its own, so <clears throat> I can actually see you know the panel lines quite um, accented already but uh, let's just see how they how they look here yeah they look pretty darn good Okay, panel line washes in. <laughs> so I'm going to go and uh, finish up all these little bits here. And I don't really think there's too much to report on the model. There's really, like I said, there's really not much left for me to do on it. You know, i got to just start assembling all the little components and stuff. So I guess I'll get to that and start painting the rest of these little, little bits here. It's time to glue on all the clear parts this is like the final home run of the model here and so I've glued these uh, glued this part here together and put the gun in it and um, this is gonna be like a little bit of a touch-up later on that snoring you may be hearing in the background is my dog uh, 
Yes, Truly is very happy to be here right now. So, she snores. So, this fits in like that. Like I said, some of the parts where, I, where these like came off when I took them apart uh, after masking them, they're going to need a bit of, you know, cleaning up later on, but that's like, just a little bit of touch-ups. That's okay. That's uh, not something I'm particularly worried about. And I cleaned all the parts, uh, at least the inside of the parts, with Novus. And right now I have, this is crystal clear. Oh, I should mention Novus 1. That's the one for polishing clear parts. I like Novus a lot more than Future. I've, I've tried um, I've tried dunking future, like, uh, clear parts in the future twice now, or three times, I can't even remember. And basically every time I've done it, I have not liked the end results. There's, like, fibers in there, and sometimes it, they just come out darker than before. Um, so, not too thrilled with that stuff. And so I like to use Novus instead. But, uh, let's get this piece in here. Okay, uh, 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 little snag right there, there, oops, and so there's a bunch of crystal clear seeping through, where's that brush I want, you just take a paintbrush, you dip it in water, and you brush it over the glue. And uh, because it's water soluble, it'll just wipe off. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Quite happy with that. What's crazy is like I can see everything on the inside. Like I've never had that happen before. You know, always there's some kind of I don't know, the glass is too thick or whatever, but this stuff is, is really crazy how how nice and clear the windows are. And so I did the one on the top here. It was a bit of a handful, but I uh, managed to get that one on there. But uh, let's glue the other half on here. Let me see if I can just... No, I don't want to rest that on that. I'll do this. There we go. So I've already glued the uh, little gun in there. Let's take this off. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that on. I changed my mind. <laughs> Let me just clean this toothpick off. It's got a nice layer of uh, glue on it there. Okay. Mm. Now that should do it. Well, there we go. This is so fussy. My goodness, what is she dreaming about? That is snoring on an epic scale. It's because boxers have such short noses. There we go. And there's a little bit of glue there. Just a tiny bit. Oh, need more water. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that one's in. And there's 
the uh, the tub. Don't know how well that'll pick up, but uh, looks pretty good. I just actually noticed another spot here. So yeah, just keep your blur um your brush like pretty clean when you do this because you're going to be mixing it up into a very watery paste <laughs> and uh, when you do that it's kind of like you're, you're just spreading it around a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Like I said, just a couple of touch-ups and uh, it's good to go. And I've got all the other parts basically painted and ready to go. Uh, the wheels here uh, the, this black paint needs to harden a bit more. I've got the propellers in the red spinner there. That turned out nice. And like the exhausts and all this other stuff and a couple little more antenna and whatever else and um, yeah. I'll basically be done but this is kind of my hard part right now is, is uh, cleaning up and getting all these um, clear parts on it making sure everything's just, you know, ready to go. But, uh, I'm, I'm really excited because this thing's almost done. This is the final reveal of the He 111 build from Hasegawa that's packaged by Revel and I'm very very thrilled with how the final product has uh, turned out. This is a really terrific model to build. I had so much fun doing this kit. This is this is just a enjoyable kit from start to finish. Um, the engineering of this kit is really, really well uh, thought out. They really went to town. You know, I was thinking back of all the He 111s that we've had over the years. We've had Frog, we've had Airfix's lump of plastic, we've had Italy, Revel had their own, uh, Matchbox, and I'm probably forgetting a couple, but they were all very similar in their construction and their and in their design they were very you know not really well thought out and uh, this is like the first time I think that we've really got a He 111 that's really really nice and of good quality and uh, everything like I said just fit perfectly like having this whole tub section here on the bottom you know a lot of times this is a piece in here uh, these windows on the bottom they, they they're part of the fuselage and you put these on afterwards and uh, it's always like it's always tough to do that, masking it and painting it, and you end up you know pushing them through or whatever. But here they're crystal clear parts. They look terrific, and they fit really really well. It's it's you know it's a perfect fit, and basically all around. I only had one fit issue really, actually kind of two, and that was just a bit here in the um, wing root here. And putting in the bomb section, the bomb bay there. 
Um, the only other fit issue I would ever say is the cowling here. It comes in three pieces and um, <clears throat> it's a bit clunky. Um, like this, this is a panel here and it fits on top of the, the two on the side and it seems to kind of fall down a little bit lower. Um, but I really like the addition of the um, poly caps here. So, you know, you can paint these on later, put them on, and you're, you know, you're good to go. Uh, yeah, I love any model that includes poly caps or a system where the propeller is put on, like, last. Um, yeah, one of the nicest things, and if I had known that the parts were going to be this nice, you know, if I was going to build a second one, I probably would add a photo etch metal cockpit because the the parts in here are so clear you can see all the detail inside of there it is it's really terrific you know for years we've had these thick pieces and it's like kind of why bother but these are beautifully molded I can see all the detail and work I put in there and if I had a photo etch metal set you know if I was building this one again I would definitely invest in that to just add some more detail into the kit uh, there's quite a few good options with this, you know, they have external bombs, they have a couple other really nice camo schemes, and I, I just, again, I just really got a thrill out of building this kit. I think it's terrific. Um, did have a problem, though, and it wasn't Hasegawa's fault, it was Revel's fault, and that was the decals. The decals silvered, um, and I took every precaution I could to, you know, prevent that. And even after they were laid down, I did my best to get rid of whatever silvering I could. I used extensive uh, solvents and took quite a bit of time to, you know, get rid of it. But it didn't work, uh, 100%. So there's still a bit of silvering on there. I'm not impressed, but I did the best with it, uh, with what I could. And it seems to be a problem, because I just finished another Revel kit. It seems to be kind of a problem going around with uh, Revel. And it was a very glossy surface, so... Um, you just gotta look, you know, look out for that. It's not that, not, not that big a deal. Like I said, it kind of has to be under the right, um, light before you can see it. But, uh, this was definitely one of the most difficult aircraft I've had to mask in a while. Um, because it's a very angular aircraft and getting some of these angles correct was, uh, was a little difficult. But I really love how the splinter turned out. I think it looks terrific. And uh, I really like these RLM paints that I was able to mix up from uh, the Tamiya instructions. I think they turned out really well. I particularly like this um, very nice blue. Um, looks pretty pretty darn good, I think. Um, real spin, which is just a nice bonus. And uh, this was one of the other problems I had with the kit was um, <clears throat> getting these doors to stay down was a bit difficult to do and in the instructions they don't show you what they're supposed to look like when they're closed um, so I kind of folded them on here a little bit and it actually looks pretty similar to what it's you know supposed to look like uh, but um, yeah when you get it down there it looks basically normal so how is this kit going to compare to the new tool airfix one um, quite frankly I don't know because the new tool airfix one isn't out yet However, I did see pictures of it at the Nuremberg Toy Fair, and uh, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see what that one's going to be like. Uh, because, to me, this is about as far as engineering as you can get. Like, I, I really don't see how a company is going to take this and make it better. It, this is really kind of very, very high on the scale of engineering the kit. So I'm very curious to see what they're going to do. I'm pretty sure Airfix is going to have more detail here in the uh, cockpit. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that one and, and maybe getting one in, in the future. Um, but I'm in no hurry to get it because this, this Hasegawa kit is, is just fantastic. So I'm really curious to see how these two are going to be to each other. But I think they're going to be like... If you can't get the Airfix one and you really want a He-111, you're thinking, ah, this Revel kit, maybe. Um, yeah, this one is definitely worth your time. It's It was just beautiful to put together. The, uh, you know, the canopy here comes in three pieces. You know, there's one big one on the top, there's one on the bottom, 
and there's a little one here on the side and the fit of it all was just perfect it was so perfect I had no problems with it whatsoever you know you just put this on you put the top window on there and you're done and it was just just great really well uh, thought out and very well engineered kit so I'm, I'm really excited to have finally gotten around to building this one and uh, yeah that's all about I have to say about it I, I just love it I had way too much fun building it but uh, I'm gonna go take off now I've got another model to build this is a uh, yeah a really worthwhile kit and uh, so hope you've enjoyed this video everyone and if you like you can leave a comments down below and I uh, hope to see you guys all soon in the next build. This is RebelCloud9. If I haven't taught you anything, at least you've learned what not to do. I'll see you guys later.